How tired are you in the morning without your cup of coffee? Tired like me tired? <laughs> I bet, right? We all love our coffee. You know, coffee is one of the top five favorite foods and drinks that climate change could actually take from us. So I'll walk you through all of them, but first, let's talk about how it could impact this. After water and tea, coffee is the third most consumed beverage around the world. But as the climate changes, will coffee be taken from us? Hannah Nushwander is research director for strategy and communications at World Coffee Research. I believe it won't take it from us entirely because we love it too much. <laughs> We're not gonna let it happen, but it is certainly changing the landscape for coffee farmers and for coffee drinkers. The growing unpredictability of the weather is making it harder for coffee growers to succeed. We definitely see that higher temperatures are very stressful for coffee plants. Rain can be a huge problem. If the coffee tree is flowering, those flowers turn into the cherries that contain the seed that is the bean that we roast and drink. And if it rains when all the flowers are out, it knocks the blossoms off and then the cherries don't produce. So you don't have a harvest. And all of this is forcing roasters to search for new options. One of the core ways that a roaster gets a coffee to taste the way that it tastes is by sourcing from very particular places, particular countries or regions within those countries and kind of melding the flavors together. And then of course, adding their special touch in the roasting process. But we're already starting to see a lot of shifts in um, where roasters are sourcing from, looking for um, options for substitution because either the coffee just isn't available from where they used to get it from or it's gotten more expensive. Coffee roasters and farmers are searching for a climate resistant bean that's more tolerant to heat, disease and drought. One of the bigger kind of shifts or substitutions that you see is um, roasters replacing Arabica coffee, which is one species of coffee, with Robusta coffee which is a different species. And it's typically grown in very different places in very different environmental conditions, um, lower altitudes, and typically is considered to have a lower quality, although it doesn't have to. And so this kind of amazing uh, world we're living in right now, where you can walk into any coffee shop and find coffee from Colombia and coffee from Rwanda and coffee from Burundi, you're gonna see, I think, less diversity and, and probably higher prices for those higher end coffees. Up next is another one of the world's most favorite drinks. From Chardonnay to Merlot, climate change is altering wine as we know it. Wine itself is, is a product of climate. So how well wine does in the future, how good every vintage is, depends totally on the weather regime that year for that particular location. People talk a lot about terroir. Terroir is really the accompaniment of how the soil, the weather, all the conditions that year end up affecting the wine that we have. So with climate change, we've seen huge impacts on wine grapes. With warming temperatures, grapes are now ripening faster than they did in the past. So one of the biggest impacts we have that we are observing across almost every wine growing region is that as it gets warmer, the timing of events, especially the timing of harvest and the period right before harvest when all of the special magical things happen that produce really excellent wine grapes is moving up. So growers are definitely struggling with how to produce a similar quality of wine when they have that earlier ripening period during a hotter period. In wine growing regions like Napa and Sonoma in the south of France, extreme weather is already leaving its mark. I think climate change has already taken your favorite wines from you and you might not know it. The wine growing regions in France have already warmed over a degree and a half. So they're well into that range where scientists have been concerned about warming leading to really big changes. You're not getting the same types of wine from the same regions as you were 30 or 40 years ago. And you can't. That world is gone by because of our human impact on the globe. Oh, excuse me. Well, changes to the climate are also taking a bite out of one of our favorite fruits. Does this mean we're no longer gonna be able to grow our favorite apples? Lee Kalsitz is an associate professor of fruit physiology and researcher at Washington State University. I don't think they will take our favorite apples from us, but they might change the type of apples that grow and where they grow and how easy they are to grow. 
One problem to grow a really good apple, you need cool temperatures at night. And with climate change, our nights are getting hotter. Well, we all want apples that are really nice red color that have good quality. And to do that, you need cool nights as the apples start to ripen and the apples start to get color. So if we have really warm nights during harvest, it decreases color and it decreases quality. And the future could bring us more bad apples. Some years, like last year, the quality in general across North America for Honeycrisp apples was not very good. This year, what we're seeing is the quality is much better. So you're gonna have a lot, just a lot more variabilities. But I think the, the probability of having a bad year will increase as we go into the future. So apple growers will need to adjust to survive in an uncertain climate future. It's time to scarf down your favorite chocolate while you still can. I already got into this one. Chocolate is made from the fruit of cacao trees and those trees are incredibly sensitive to climate change. Cacao grows in rainforests and that's a very specific band of temperature and humidity. Like many things, they're like Goldilocks. They don't like it too hot or too cold, too wet or too dry. You need just the right conditions. And we're changing those conditions by changing the climate and heating things up. Just two countries, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana, produce more than half of the world's chocolate. But by 2050, that region could warm by more than two degrees Celsius, making it much less suitable for chocolate production. So apparently the area in which cacao can grow is shrinking and will continue to shrink as the world continues to warm. So if you love chocolate and you wanna keep chocolate around, we gotta stop the world from warming. But cacao is trapped in a destructive feedback loop. Climate change reduces the amount of suitable land, which drives farmers to cut down more forest for agriculture, which then leads to more climate change. Extreme weather is the thing that we are most concerned about because it's the way climate change is affecting our lives now. And if we want to prevent it from getting even more extreme, we know what we have to do. We got to phase out fossil fuels, deploy clean energy and protect our forests. It's that simple. Corn shells are essential to a delicious taco and one of the world's favorite foods. But corn's future is also looking uncertain. Corn is very sensitive to drought. It's very sensitive to the temperature when it pollinates. You really decrease your yields if you have very hot temperatures of pollination. With rising temperatures, corn production may have to shift to new locations. Maybe corn production can move, you know, and go further north. Well, there are some issues there because one of the reasons the Midwest is so productive, part of it is climate, but it's climate on top of really fertile soils, deep fertile soils, can't move the soils. So it may not be possible to move all of that production elsewhere. So there are some challenges, I think. And droughts could also put more pressure on corn. As the rainfall gets less reliable, farmers turn more and more to irrigation. They have to irrigate so much. And meanwhile, the aquifer under that part of the country is, is getting depleted. So they have to drill their wells deeper. Then at some point, it becomes no longer economical to grow corn. And that could put more pressure on governments and taxpayers to subsidize corn farmers to protect our favorite taco. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Now, let's get down to business. We've got chocolate and corn and wine and coffee for now.